Hello everybody, bit of a surprise for you, this wasn't planned, uh, David Abel in the UK at 3.30pm Friday afternoon, I wonder how your Friday is going, <laughs> uh, nearly the weekend and here apparently we're going to be having sunshine so that'll be something to look forward to, it is very very cold outside Took the dogs for a walk up around the uh, reservoir and the earth was just so cold. Unbelievable. Anyway, this is just a quick um, mention for Monday when all of our training commences on Monday. The first wave of people that emailed me, you should have received an acknowledgement email. Um, there's going to be nearly 4,000 people and names, <laughs> emails still coming in. So uh, if you haven't received an email from me and there's about 1,000 still to go out, uh, if, you, if you contacted me before yesterday, please check your junk folder, your spam folder, um, to see whether my email is in there. If it hasn't arrived, drop me another email, please. Now, out of all those that were sent out last night, UK time, and that was just on 3,000 emails, uh, 60 or 70 have been returned, bounced back. No such email address or you know similar messages. So that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, I'd rather find out those who are genuine at this stage or of course there could be any other reason why the email bounced but I've got about 70 that have bounced back um, and three unsubscribed straight away which I find strange but they've obviously had second thoughts knowing that I'm collecting ISPs as well to check on um, those who aren't quite being honest with me, if you know what I mean. So I just want to reassure you guys, the training now is nearly complete. I've still got a bit more work to do. For the photography one, I am really, really looking forward to this. Uh, but I'm looking forward to all of them, don't get me wrong. But the photography, really looking forward to. And tomorrow morning, I'm going off to take some photographs uh, that will be hopefully showing the differences that I'm wanting you to get to grips with. And I'm going to one of my favorite locations. It's about an hour's drive from where I live and it's where my friends, the Kingfishers live. So providing the weather forecast is as it should be, that's where I'm going to be for a couple of hours tomorrow morning with the Kingfishers and hopefully they won't keep me waiting very long and I'm going to focus on a few of the photographs to share with you and how to get the results that I obtain. So I will warn you, with the photography, there's homework. So I'm not going, or I hope I'm not going to make it boring by giving you all the technical stuff about cameras. Uh, I, I want to teach this in layman's terms. In other words, plain English. Or for those of you tuning in from the States, plain American or Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic that we've got people from all around the world that are coming in for these sessions. Absolutely unbelievable. And I'm just going to repeat it free of charge. You won't get to eight sessions from me and then find, oh, for the next one, you've got to pay $10 or 100 That's just not going to happen. This is from my heart and soul to you because I've had people all through my life helping me at various stages. And I just want to give back. And so many people are questioning that, you know, can't be doing it for free. I am, really am, because I want to see you become excited about EFT about photography you know about your forthcoming wedding if you're planning one in the next couple of years so um 
I will be sending out the next bank of emails uh, this evening. So you should receive, if you haven't already received one, you should have it. And it's purely telling you the times to check in, that I'll be sending an email to everybody on Monday, giving you the URLs for each and every topic that we're having on Monday. It's going to be good fun. It's going to be really, really good fun. So for my amusement earlier today, I was reading through some of the comments. It's so hard <laughs> to believe what some people write. And I try not to be rude in a reply. I ignore most. I remove quite a lot because anything that is not tasteful for others to read, I just remove it. Um, number of people that refer to the coronavirus as being a boomer remover. I've really got used to that expression now. But tell you what, those, of, those people that are talking about, you know, am I still alive? Have I died? Um, I think I'm now living proof that I've beaten pneumonia and I've beaten the virus. Now, another thing that people are taking issue with me, and life is too damn short, you know, to take these stupid issues. I have referred to the coronavirus as a disease. It's a virus, but I've referred to it as a de disease. And people take delight in telling me it's not a disease. Well, check out, Google coronavirus. Just Google it. And you'll see the World Health Organization, massively large health organization, they refer to it as the coronavirus disease, COVID-19. COVID standing for coronavirus disease. That's what the D is. 19 doesn't mean there are 19 different types of disease. It was named in 2019. So COVID-19. Uh, I do not mind you taking issue with me, but you know you need to check your facts before trying to correct me. This isn't to everybody, this is to a minority. So whether it's a disease, whether WHO and the CDC have got it wrong, don't tell me, email them and say, hey, on your massive worldwide website, you are referring to the coronavirus as a disease. It's wrong. Please correct it and say it's a virus. You tell them, not me. Yeah, they must have it wrong because you have got to be right, haven't you? Two years ago, everybody on YouTube and Facebook, you know, the critics, they were politics experts. Whether it's Trump in the US or whether it's... Uh, happening in the UK, everybody was an expert in politics. And suddenly those same people have become experts in coronavirus. They must have brilliant minds. I'm talking to the critics, not to those of you who understand, who've clearly had an education, who've got a sound mind, who've got intellect, who can think for yourselves, and you're not just a sheep following all the other sheep and very often going in the wrong direction. God, I'm sounding bulgy today, aren't I? But <laughs> I've had quite a good day, actually. I've really, really enjoyed um, preparing for Monday's teaching. So we're going into EFT. And again, somebody just made a comment five minutes ago about that, saying it's new age and that it's sorcery and that we're doomed. You know, God, God, get a life. EFT comes from the acupuncture of the meridians. We're using acupuncture without the needles. And that is years and years and years old. So certainly nothing new age about it. Anyway, um, what else can I tell you? Expect the email from me. If you haven't got it, drop me another email. I don't mind getting too many emails. Uh, if they're bouncing back to you, you're doing something wrong. And I haven't got the time to go through and find out the reasons why each one is bouncing. Just haven't got the time for that. Uh, if it works, it works. Spot on LJD, spot on. 
Uh, we're getting ready for the worst here in the US. So happy to see us in health. Yeah, um, do you know, I, I might be very naive in saying this, but I think it's going to be over quicker than we realised. If the general population are sensible and do what the governments are recommending, and it's all about hygiene, uh, self-isolating where you need to, I think it'll be over in 12, 14 weeks. Really do. Now, that might be the most stupid comment that's ever been made, but that's what I genuinely believe. If the population play ball and are sensible and take individual responsibility, I think it'll be over quicker than what our governments believe it will be. Uh, warlock, yeah, I don't mind being called a warlock. Uh, is your lung function same as before catching? I would say it's slightly better. My lung functioning hasn't been good for the last few years. Um, so th this has been a really sharp learning curve for me. And the EFT has certainly improved my lung function. And if I'm being absolutely honest with you, I believe I'm healthier now than I was six months ago. Okay? It's, it's often like that in life, isn't it? You need a sharp kick up the backside to chivvy you up. Also lost in England, we measure weight by stones, pounds and ounces. So I've lost just on two stone, which is 28 pound uh, from the Japanese experience. And I think it's because of the food, smaller portion sizes, food that I wasn't really enjoying either. So I wasn't eating everything that was put in front of me. Um, and the daft thing is, you know, when folk were asking me what would be my first meal when I came back to the UK, what have I really missed? And I said, fish and chips. Now that I'm back in the UK, I'm not actually fancying the fish and chips. It's too big. So our meal sizes have really reduced considerably. I'm probably eating half what we were before we went away. A little bit more than a portion size in Japan, but certainly a lot less than I would normally eat because I used to love my food. Oliver. Dave, love me. Thanks, Oliver. Uh, Kardashians are posting about the end times. Will we go on cruises again? Yeah, most certainly will. Once it's all settled down and it's safe, um, I've got a cruise planned for July, and that is in Portugal. It's a river cruise. I haven't cancelled or postponed it. I'm waiting to see what happens. And if things improve in the way that I hope and think they will, there is going to be a cruise on Princess around the British Isles, going into three ports in Ireland, two or three ports in Scotland, right the way around the country. A 12 day cruise, that's for August. Uh, everything else has been postponed. First time you said, oh, I'll tell you what, one of the other funny comments, I shouldn't take the mick out of people I shouldn't but he was saying there was a video that was pre-recorded and I think it was the only pre-recorded video I did in the hospital in Japan dated the 11th of March and it was shown on the 10th of March in the UK and uh, he's called me a liar because I've explained to to this guy he's called me a liar he says you can't record a video the day after it's been shown. And the <laughs> you can, and I tried to explain that, you know, when we get on a, the aeroplane at London Heathrow and we get to Japan, we have to forward our watches nine hours. So Japan is living in the future and we are living in the past. But this guy could not get it at all. Calls me an absolute liar fake misleading the public i mean i hope to goodness you all do understand that we have a thing called the international dateline and japan are nine hours ahead of us it's like australia you know you think of new year's eve when they have the, all the fireworks in the major cities all over the world in the capital centers of the world australia 
I can't remember. I think they are the first, not the last. But their midnight is 12 hours before the English midnight. So when we have our midnight celebrations, their day is just starting. They've been asleep for 10, 11 hours in between their midnight and ours. Yeah, it's really, really odd, isn't it? But anyway, there we are. That's why there was the time dating difference, purely because I filmed it in Japan. And yeah, anyway, there you go. So yeah, I, I do get I do get some comments that really do amuse me. Uh, I live just down the road from where you were in Japan. I find my portion sizes change radically. You wouldn't if you were in a hospital. <laughs> it's always the same. Um, what I couldn't get used to, not nor Sally, what we couldn't get used to is that it's so different to European food and the way you eat it. So we would have for breakfast, first portion might be, and you generally get four different portions for your breakfast. First portion might be uh, cooked cabbage, finely shredded, but stone cold. Literally as if it's come out of a refrigerator. Um, that's a bit alien to me, that. Uh, noodles that are grey in colour, not like Chinese or the normal Japanese style noodle, but absolute battleship grey, if you know what I mean by that. Um, the colour is just not appealing at all. But yeah, it, it takes a lot to get used, or for me, to get used to the Japanese food. Uh, yeah, grey. Donna Rogers, grey. What was my first ever job? Working for a bank. I'm 66 and you get it. Thank God. Good. And you're educated. He is a speed reader. Impressive. I don't know what that means, a speed reader. I'm not reading anything. I'm, I'm reading what the comments or trying to. I'm missing about 10 for everyone I pick up. You think the panic buying is scandalous. But why is it? Why is it happening? Why toilet paper? You know, I just don't get that at all. I really, really don't get it. Have I talked to Belinda? No, not since we've been back. I haven't. Do you know, I haven't got her details. My daughter has. And I really, uh, I really need to show Belinda an exceptional amount of gratitude because she changed our lives in Japan. Wonderful. I called her my little angel. And she really is. Australian lady, lives in Japan for 20 years, speaks and writes fluent Japanese. She was an absolute lifesaver. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, somebody's just commented, they are the most healthiest noodles. Uh, we were told that by the hospital, but it still doesn't make them that easy to get into your mouth. Uh, when did we return home? Last Saturday, I think it was. I think it was on the Saturday, late afternoon. Uh, what underlying health conditions? Good question. Now, I am going to make another video after Monday to explain about the underlying health conditions. Mine is diabetes and it's insulin dependent. And <clears throat> Sally was cleared uh, to leave Japan five, six days before me. Um, and the reason that the hospital gave me, the doctor gave me, that I couldn't get rid of all the remnants of the virus is because the insulin levels were holding that back, were holding back that healing process. Now, I was on in the UK uh, an almighty amount of insulin, absolutely almighty. I think I've mentioned it, but I'm going to tell you again now, and I'm going to make a video um, about how to change if you're a diabetic, how to change habits to improve things overall. But <clears throat> my doctor, and I've got a diabetic nurse as well, referred me, it must be a year ago, to a special diabetic, um, it was a meeting, like a little conference, of diabetics in the area where I live. Well, 20, minute ra radi 20 mile radius around where we live. And there must have been about a dozen of us there. And there was one diabetic specialist 
in that meeting with a nurse. And to cut a long story short, they changed my type of insulin and the quantity of insulin that I put in. So get ready for this. I was injecting for months, a good nine months at least, 75 units of insulin in the morning and 75 units of insulin in the evening, 150 units a day. Now, this insulin, it's called Humulin M3. I'm not recommending it. I'm not a doctor and a doctor of medicine, a GP, anything like that. So please do not think this is what I'm recommending. This is what I was on. And the M3 Humulin insulin, it's got some very fast acting. I think it's 30% fast acting and 70% long acting. So that one injection is doing two things. As soon as you have a meal, the fast acting part, that 30%, counter, counters the uh, carbs and blood sugars and the rest of it sees you through the day, the long acting. And the hospital, when I told them, because I've got all my insulin with me, I've got my uh, needles, the pen, you know, everything I needed. And they said, you will not be using that while you're in our hospital. So I thought, oh my word. And they took control of the insulin, their insulin. And they put me on two different kinds. Uh, one was Lanctus or Lanctus, and the other was Humulin, but the fast acting. So the moment I woke up in the morning, they took my blood sugar reading and they gave me four units of fast acting just before breakfast. Then about half an hour after breakfast, they gave me eight units of fast acting. Lunchtime, after lunch, eight units. After the evening meal, eight units, all fast acting throughout the entire day. But just before I went to sleep, they gave me 28 units of long lasting, I don't know whether it's Lantus or Lanctus, I can't remember, but a name similar to that, of the long acting. So that was bringing me up to 24, 28, 56 units. And sometimes they never gave me the four first thing in the morning. So let's say 56 units compared to 150. They reduced my insulin intake by two thirds, reduced it by two thirds. My readings, and they did all the injecting, by the way. I wasn't allowed to touch the pen, nothing. And uh, all they let me do was prick my own finger um, to get the blood for them to do the testing before mealtimes. And reduced the insulin by two thirds and my numbers came thundering down. So where I was quite happy if I'd got, uh, now the American numbers are very different to the British numbers. In England, we aim for 5.5. Now, if I was getting seven, eights, or even a nine, I'd be very happy. Well, they were getting my numbers bang on throughout the entire day. It was bang on on two thirds the less the insulin. So what made that change? The way that the insulin was, was dispersed, was given to me, uh, the two different types of insulin and the food, the quantity of food intake, all of that made a difference. Couple that with the uh, 28 pound weight loss, we have got a very, very different uh, type of person who is diabetic. Do you get it? So I'll talk more about that next week. So, where's all the questions then? No wonder you feel better. Absolutely. Uh, Tom Hanks died. Don't, I cannot believe that. Tom Hanks came out of hospital, uh, discharged fine. Were they not? Somebody just check that, will you? Someone just check it. There's no way that Tom Hanks died, but Let's uh, let's just make sure. Yeah, I don't know my blood type. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. See, these are the idiots that we have. Uh, low intelligent life. They should be sent off to a different planet somewhere in orbit to test out a different planet to see whether it's habitable or not. Habitable. Yeah, Tom Hanks is home and safe. 
Good. How does it feel to be immune to the most dangerous virus around? I'm not convinced it's the most dangerous, um, but it feels good to be immune from that strain. Do you like Piers now? I've always liked him, um, providing he lets people talk. You know, and most of the time he's, he's got verbal diarrhoea. And that's what I'm accused of. But, but most of the time that's what he's like. You know, yap, 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 yap. But that interview that uh, we had uh, Wednesday morning, I thought he was terrific. And I had no idea he was going to pull up that comment that I made um, when we were on the cruise ship. And that's how he opened it, you know. And before they went to the break, before the interview... He said, David Abel, this is going to be your worst nightmare. And I thought, oh, my gee, you know. But it was, he was great. Yeah, enjoyed him immensely. Uh, you can turn type do diabetes around. Yeah, you can. Totally agree. MGA or MGB? I can go back way before the A's. Uh, I did have an MGA, loved it, had the coupe. But I much prefer soft tops or convertibles, whichever you want to call it. And I had a very early MGTF, and I had a, a very new MGTF. I've had MGTCs, MGTDs, um, all around in the time of the war, World War II, and uh, lots of MGBs with an MGA. When I was quite young, my first job, saved up a bit of money in the first year of work, bought myself an MGA. Is that your wedding photo? No, that's my son, Stephen, Roberta, and his two daughters. Uh, can we hear the doggies running around? You can. God, if you can hear them, you've got blooming good hearing. What do I drive now? Uh, a Range Rover. It's not new. It's a bit battered, but it's a good, reliable car. I'm wanting to change it, really, but it's OK for now. Do you have a workout routine? Yep. I walk down the stairs, I walk back up the stairs at least once a day. <clears throat> Look at all the people. It's only 900 odd. That's not a lot. Uh, cool. Slow it down. How is your wife? She'll come in in a minute. If you've ever bought a spoiler for an MGF or TF, <laughs> the MGF, they were not the best of engines. Um... Yeah, they really weren't. They had an oil seal problem. Uh, yeah, cost a lot of money, my MGF. I then went on to the TF. You always wanted the MG square back convertible. Yeah, chrome wheels, please. Chrome wheels, chrome bumpers. That's it. They had the head gasket used to go on them. Right, so we've both had that experience. And because the engine's under the seat, it makes it bloody hard to change it. <coughs> SU carbs. Oh God, this, this is taking me back. Yeah, and you see, I've still got the bloody broken tooth and dentists don't want to know the public at the moment. They don't want to have that close proximity to the mouth. So goodness knows how long I'm going to be looking like this. What breed of honey and pudding? They are um, Yorkshire Terriers. Yeah. Not nice to the patients in the Italian hospital, I agree. Oh. You know, for people saying this virus is a hoax, they really do need their heads testing. You know, we are fortunate. Sally and I are fortunate. We've got through this. But all the people that have died, you know, we've had people on our cruise ship that went away for a fabulous holiday to a country they've probably never been to before. And um, they never came back. It's, it's tragic. Absolutely tragic. Uh, I look well now. Thank you. Do you and Sally ride on your son's motorbike? Why would we? I've got my own motorcycle. I've got a Royal Enfield Bullet 350. How did they treat us? Exceptionally well. Can't say a bad word about uh, being in either hospital in Japan. They were utterly amazing. Full of gratitude for them. Absolutely. How many passed away? My memory is absolute rubbish. Um, 
I think it was 77 in total, but I'd have to check that. Will we go back to Japan? I'd love to. Really would. Not for a year or so, but I'd love to go back. Uh, why do you think the UK will go into lockdown? When do you think? Um, we're doing it gradually, aren't we? So we're all getting used to the idea that it's, um, it's coming. I don't know. If it goes into lockdown, I would think it'll be within three or four days. If. This is why I'm going out tomorrow morning with my camera to photograph kingfishers because uh, I might not be able to do it next week. What advice to protect yourself? Plenty of hand washing, plenty of uh, gel, no shaking hands, no kissing, no hugging. You know, just taking lots of precaution. Plenty of hot drinks. Yeah, plenty of hot drinks. Could we have coped if we'd been separated? I don't think I could have. No, I really don't. I don't think I would have been able to cope. Uh, we've been together for so blooming long, 50 years, uh, to be isolated from each other and not able to walk into each other's room, that would have been dreadful. Uh, no, you can't see the bike now. Haven't got shoes on. Got to go outside to the garage. Not going to do it. Uh, yeah, I will be replying to everybody who wanted to know about the British Airways. Um, there's just too many other priorities at the moment. So hopefully next week I'll get round to that. But, you know, we're talking about Diamond Princess and the deaths. But um, there is another ship in Argentina... Uh, coral princess and they are not allowed to get off the ship and they're not in quarantine uh, there's no sign of the coronavirus to my understanding but they're not being allowed off the ship they will be allowed off the ship if they have a flight to get them to their home country but the problem is certainly for UK there are no flights and I think it's three or four hundred passengers on Coral Princess are Brits. Uh, they haven't a hope in hell of getting home. So, you know, what's going to happen to them? They're not going to be put up in hotels. They're just stuck on the ship with lots of other people of all different nationalities. What are the governments going to do to get them to their home country, if anything? That's a question that really needs to be asked to the UK government. Uh, close down the borders, that's right. There is an Argentina airline for them. Yeah, but will that be allowed? Will the Argentinian airline be allowed to fly into Europe, in particular into the UK? Sweden not in quarantine? Uh, I think your time will come. Let's just wait and see. I, you know, I hope it doesn't, and I hope you don't have deaths in, in Sweden. But we're just going to be... It's a waiting game, isn't it, we're watching. Do I think Boris is doing a good job? It's taken him long enough to get this far. He started to take action. I applaud him for that. I wish he had done it just a bit earlier. Hang on, I just want to see this one here. Did you hear the ships had 5G? Yeah. Uh, it's interesting that the Princess fleet, and I'm a true believer in Princess, that the medallion ships have all got 5G installed. Now, I don't know enough about 5G yet. It's just what I'm reading on the internet. Uh, I need to find out more before I make a decision with that in mind. Hi Kelly, hi Rita, thank you Wendy, thank you Wendy, I don't know what that means, don't go on a 5G ship, but I think you're going to find that this is going to be the standard for most cruise lines in the world, uh, to have 5G, the fastest internet on the ocean. 
Um, 5G is it's the radiation somebody is saying that's killing. That's I, I can understand that form of thinking. You need to think more about the oxygen that 5G actually takes up. That's what's caused people to pass out. That's the reports that I've read, but I can't verify any of that. 5G is very, very fast. How's the book coming along? There is no book. What brand is my watch? Can you see it? It's a really good fake Rolex. Uh, it's good to see you and your wife. Great, thank you. Hello from New Hampshire. You need to you need to Google about 5G and oxygen and see how it yeah read about it. It's it's a terrific amount of information. I can't go into it now. Uh, Bubblefish, hello from Japan. How's life doing there? <laughs> So I, I haven't gone away. I'm just reading the comments. I'm thinking of buying an Aston Martin. Have you ever owned one? No, I haven't. But my daughter and law Roberta's got one. Uh, they've had a couple of Astons. Japan is fine. Good. Hi, South Africa. New York. Ethiopia. Wow. No, haven't had my fish and chips yet. Do I agree with school exams being cancelled? I think it's a very good measure, not just for school, and I really am sorry for all the school kids and those that are going to proms and so on for, you know, leaving school where they're being cancelled. But I think it is a very responsible measure that the government have taken. Any gatherings of people where they're going to be close together, yeah, uh, by preventing that from happening, I think is sensible. It's tough. It's tough on the kids who've been doing all that studying. You know, I've got two granddaughters who are in exactly that moment now where they are, they've purchased their proms dress, they've been looking forward to going out, cancelled. They installed 5G at a school in California a year later, kids went down with leukemia or cancer. 20 years old, what type of fish would you suggest me to eat? Oh, blimey, I don't know. Whatever your taste is. I like cod, haddock, uh, place. That's the sort of fish, white fish. That's what I like. Haven't got any crisps at all, Rick James. Zero. None. Had my moment in Japan. Gone. Could be until September. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that it could be. I think it's going to be quicker in the UK, but it could be till September. Uh, have, have I ever tried Indian food? You don't get a belly like mine if you don't have Indian, Chinese, uh, Bangladesh, you know. Yeah, I love spicy food. Love it. Do I think the ship we were on, Diamond Princess, did we get sick because of the 5G? No, I don't think so. Uh, there were a lot of very ill people that we came into exceptionally close contact with in Taiwan. And that's where I think it got us. Hi, Andang from Indonesia. No, not, not, not absorbing the oxygen in the brain. Will we travel there again? Yeah, we will. Now, I just want to pause all, you, all of you for a moment. I know you're going to keep on sending them in, but I can't read them. I want to give a mention to a special young man, and I wish to goodness I could remember what his uh, YouTube name is. But his name is Jack and he's 11 years old and he lives in Banbury. 
And young man Jack has asked for me to give him a shout because he wants to get lots of subscribers. Now, I'm going to help you, Jack, all right? So, Jack from Banbury, I'm going to suggest that you make a post on YouTube and say who you are and any girls 10, 11 years of age that you fancy meeting and chatting to, you know, this is a brilliant opportunity for you, isn't it? Jack is my grandson. <laughs> He's one of my grandkids. And uh, he really has been watching this, apparently. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Look, Jack, you've got look at them, all these girls coming into you, boy. I hope to God you're on and you're watching this. But, of course, is your school closed? Sal, has Jack's school closed? Has Jack's school closed? All the schools are closing today, yes. They're oh, so today, he might, he's probably yet. not on, no. So he's going to get this when he comes in. Look at them all. Melody, Becky. All, all what? Andrea. Eh? Look at all what? I've, I've said he wants to find some friends on YouTube. Oh, right. And they're all saying, Ruth. Do you notice there's no fellas here? And how be nice to Jack and don't embarrass him. Zoe, that's really kind and thoughtful of you, Kanga. <laughs> uh, okay, you're here, so you might as well just say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Why are you so overexposed? I have no idea. Probably because of the light of up there. I have no idea. Well, you're a bit overexposed as I well. I am now. It's the only since you stood there. Oh, well, I'll move away then. No, you don't have to. Oh, there yeah. you go. Look. Perfect. So why the hell did that happen? I've no idea. I must be an angel. <laughs> oh, instantly, as soon as you walk in. I had this golden light round me. Right, I'll, I'm, before I go, Alison Lawson saying, hi, Sally. Hi. Sally's shirt. What's the matter with her shirt? I've just got a sweater on. Weird. Stacy. Oh, if I stand back here, it's all right. Uh, definitely an angel. Maybe. Sally is the light. Oh, God. Don't, don't <laughs> let's go there. Don't let's go there. <clears throat> Hope you're all well. Oh, yeah, yeah. really. You look like I've got a bald head. Are you planning to come to South Africa? I've been asked to do a wedding in Cape Town. Can you believe? Where's this bear? Oh, yeah? I've got... Oh, God. Get out. Oh, come on. I've been asked to do a wedding in Cape Town, so yeah, you I'd love to go. Well. There you go. Just keep your hand over the tag, will you, love? Thank God. Okay, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Oh, God, here we go. You see, I don't need a shower. Don't need a shower at all. You are right, son? You lovely girl, aren't you? Oh, you're a celebrant, yep. Yeah. I am indeed. This is too far away. I can't read these messages. Well, go nearer. I can't because he's in the way. Oh. So, in case you didn't know, this is Pud. I caught his real name is Pudding. He's a Yorkshire Terrier in Yorkshire. The fa the world famous Sunday lunch is roast beef with Yorkshire pudding. So. Hence his name, Pudding, from Yorkshire. All right. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. So I call him, I call him Pud. Puddles, don't I? Wait. What are you doing? And that's my little girl. Aren't you? You're my little girl. She's 13, nearly blind, but she's got a great quality of life. She's, she's such a lovely... She keeps him in tow. He's only six, this one, but he thinks he's three months old. Uh, but she keeps him in line. She really does. Will you stop licking his face? This cannot be healthy with the virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, right, OK. On. Go on, mate. Off you go. Nice to see you. Yeah, so there we are. So we've been on 45 minutes. 
Uh, honey is a pumpkin. No, she's a Yorkshire Terrier. She really is. With legs. Uh, what have we been eating since we got back? Really boring stuff, actually. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to go there because our stomachs just are not ready for decent meals yet. Um, last night it was what we call cottage pie. Roast beef, mashed potato, uh, roast beef. Minced beef with uh, mashed potato on top. Then you grill that. A little bit of cheese on it. Beautiful. Okay. No, I don't know who infected us. Come to view of a treatment. You saw the Diamond Princess today. On Friday, when we were driven from the hospital to uh, Narita Airport by Tokyo, we w were driven through Yokohama, and the ship was exactly in the same place, dockside, where we got off. Well, we didn't get off, we were transported off down a tunnel into the back of an ambulance. Uh, but yeah, it looked so sad, all on its own, no crew on board, really sad. Dave from Scotland. Can't wait for the training next week. Yeah, it's going to be good, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, last day at school today. Your corona bought, bought me here. Really? <laughs> I will. You're going to see more countryside tomorrow because as I said earlier on in this little video shoot um, for the photography training next week I'm going to be using a Kingfisher, hopefully. So I'm driving about an hour from where I live in the morning to see my little Kingfishers and uh, they're totally in the wild. So you just got to hope they turn up. I've sat there five hours in the past and they've never shown. But most days they come in about every 40 minutes to do their fishing and eat. So I'm just hoping that they're on their food tomorrow. Um, what the hell was the question? Something to do with the photography. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow morning. Getting ready, preparing for just a little bit in, <clears throat> in Monday session uh, with the Kingfishers. Okay, that's it. I am going to call that a day now. Uh, you're not going to see me tomorrow, but you will on Monday. And I will be sending out an email Monday morning. Every session is recorded. So don't worry if you can't get the live. Everything is recorded. So at whatever time suits you to join me, you know, that's it. Please do. Now, let me just also say something before Monday. I have repeatedly said this is not going to cost you anything. It's free. The entire training is free. You'll not be asked for anything. To, uh, you'll, you won't be invited to buy anything. There's no upselling. It's, everything is just free. I want to give it to you. But when you come to YouTube on Monday and you click on the channel on the URL, there are going to be one or two advertisements at the beginning. I think they're going to be at the beginning. Now, that is my means of payment. I literally get paid cents for every advert that's watched. It, it, it <coughs> literally cents. So I need thousands of people to see those advertisements before I get anything substantial. Certainly nothing like the cost of a training course. So what I'm asking you is please don't skip the advert. You're going to be investing 10 seconds of your life in letting those adverts run. That gives me an income for what you are going to be watching. Okay, that's, that's all there is to it. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you're not going to be watching it. Uh, it. It's just the way it works, I'm sorry. But no, I'm not sorry. I want you to subscribe because then every time I come on live, you're notified. So when you subscribe, and that's totally free process, you just click that red box that said subscribe, and there's a bell. If you click on the bell, that will then notify you every time we come live onto YouTube. Easy as that. 
Okay, so lovely chatting to you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your support. Thanks for all your encouragement, as always. And talk to you in depth on Monday. It's going to be a busy day. Bye, everybody. Bye.